Hey guys, uh, my name is Vasily Pervierzev. I am a team leader of MuseCore Editor Development Team. And also I'm the biggest fan of the QML, actually. Uh, I'm such a big fan that, of QML that I even wanted to call my sound that. But my wife, uh, for some reason, I don't know, was against it. Uh, I have no idea why, literally. <laughs> uh, so uh, using the example of our experience in transitioning the MuseCore software, I will just des describe uh, the challenges faced uh, when transforming a design from 2000s to Qt Quick, you know. And we will also discuss effective strategies for migrating uh, from QWidgets and QML and cover some limitations faced with mixing both systems in a single app and known approaches to overcome and uh, even avoid them entirely. <laughs> okay, so let me start. Uh, uh, let's start by positioning the problem and the context. I think it makes sense. So what is the MuseCore? Uh, MuseCore is an open source notation editor. Uh, uh, it's a composition software that has uh, been quickly become the world's most popular software for music notation. Uh, as far as I know, it was created in 2002, uh, based uh, on Q widgets. And the first version of MuseCore looked like this. You can see in the screen. Um, don't be afraid, because it was just a, the very, very first version. And then a second version was released, and it, it looked like this. Uh, it's already much better. It's still implemented with QWidgets, but uh, it looks uh, much better. Uh, and here you can see the version 3. It's slightly different from the second version. Uh, perhaps this uh, is a maximum that could be squeezed out of QWidgets. Just a classic desktop uh, application from the early 2000s with uh, uh, native controls. Uh, you know, it's uh, very similar to the style used in uh, Windows 2000, if anyone else remembers that version. <laughs> so, uh, but then something happened. Uh, we, ha we have expanded the team, and one uh, YouTube guy just posted a review on the MuseCore editor, and... Mm -hmm. He strongly criticized the MuseCore interface, and his video became very, very popular. So, <laughs> you know what? We just hired him, right? <laughs> it turned out that he has a head of design for Microsoft. But it was pretty useful for us, you know? Uh, so now we are working on all of these great screens, a lot of work, actually. Here's the new concepts of uh, MuseCore 4. Uh, you can see a lot of uh, customization, uh, customizations, uh, graphical effects, and so on. Um, also, it includes uh, a huge number of animations, shadows, highlights. Uh, and then it became clear for us that we can no longer stay on QWidgets. And the new design with animations and beautiful controls with graphical effects can be fully implemented only using QML tools. Uh, so that's all about the context of migrating to QML from QWidgets. Um, so now let's talk about the basic redesign strategies using the QML. Um, I usually highlight three main ones, uh, full QML, which implies 100% uh, implementation of the UI in QML, mix of QML plus QWidgets. In this option, we are talking about the implementation of UI in QML from 50 to 99%. And then uh, the last strategy is a mix of QWidgets plus QML, here respectively from 10% uh, to 40 inclusive. So let's start with the first strategy, the, with the full QML. Um, in this case, we use standard QML tools. Usually in such uh, projects, you can always find the main QML file with uh, application window, root component, 
you, as you can see here, uh, which is the main application window, actually. As you might guess from the name <laughs> of strategy, the entire UI is fully implemented using QML uh, in the context of the main application window, of course. So all you need to do is set the uh, size of the window and declare your content like this. In this case, uh, they are hard-coded. Uh, all business logic uh, is stored in C++ models, such as queue abstract item model, abstract list model, uh, or even a simple queue object with queue properties and queue invocable, as you can see in this example, uh, which also could serve as a model. When is the best time to use the strategy? You might uh, ask me. I would say that the strategy is best used when you are, uh, you know, creating a new project from scratch, and you know for sure that your entire design can be implemented using the QML. The second strategy is the mix of QML plus Q widgets. Um, in this case, the core of application UI is also implemented using QML but it's assumed that some parts of the application can be implemented using Q widgets. We will discuss it later. For example, many people prefer to keep um, complex uh, rendering logic on Q Canvas in C++ and separate rendering and model logic instead of using the QML Canvas component uh, to keep QML files as simple as possible. Uh, you can pull almost any Q widget view into the QML space and use it like a regular QML component. In order to do this, you will need to use a Q quick painted item. Um, so all you need to do is uh, inherit from Q quick painted item. Then you should override the Q quick painted item paint method. And then you should register your component uh, as a QML type and use it like a regular QML component, making sure to set its size like here. So that's all. Um, when is the best time to use this strategy? For example, uh, when you want to save time uh, rewriting local Q widget views but still want the bulk of your application to be implemented in QML. Or if you understand that some things in your interface can only be effectively implemented using the Q widgets. Uh, and finally, the third strategy, uh, a mix of Q widgets plus QML. In this case, the core of application is implemented uh, uh, using the Q widget. With this, some parts of your application can, uh, can be implemented uh, using the QML. Um, so what sh should I say about this strategy? Um, that almost any QML component can be displayed in Q widget system. In order to do this, you need to you need a bundle uh, Q quick view plus Q widget uh, or uh, separate class Q quick widget that is used for this purpose. In both cases, um, we uh, in this in both cases uh, we provide a Q widget based container like you can hear in this uh, picture that will display the QML component uh, QML content. I mean, uh, each of the options has its own advantages and disadvantages. So I will not dwell on them. Let me just say that Q quick view plus um, create window container method in Q widget is uh, slightly more efficient, but less convenient to use due this, to the several restrictions. And the Q quick widget option is easier to use, but at the same time, it's more you know power hungry in terms of the performance. So you should take care of this. And I will dwell on 
the explanation of the variant with QQQ widget, which is operated in the following way. Um, so first, first of all, you should provide the source, the QML file as a Q URL. You should set it as a source. Uh, the next step, you should uh, set precise policy. Here you can see just two options, size root objects to view and size or view to root object. And finally, you should connect it uh, to the QWidget system. So everything should work just in three steps. So, uh, oh, I forgot. I forgot to talk about the last strategy. So uh, when is better to use the strategy? What should be the case uh, when most of your project is written in Q widgets and the design suggests that it's easier to update an existing solution with QML um, than to completely rewrite it, you know? Uh, so let's make a choice choice among the strategies using MuseScore as an example. Um, do we actually need QML? Yes, the new redesign is almost impossible to implement using QWidget tools, including smooth and fluid animations and extensive customizations of components. Um, are we building a project from scratch? No. We are rewriting the existing application, which is mostly on QWidgets. So we should try to uh, keep the uh, the bulk of application uh, and avoid uh, and avoid rewriting. So, do we have things that we would like to keep on QWidgets? Of course. Uh, for example, the score canvas, as you can see on this example. Uh, which is rendered very efficiently through the QPainter interface and separates the business logics from um, display logic or view logic, it's better to say. So the last questions, so the last question is, um, are there things we need to keep in design that are nearly impossible to implement in Qt Quick? Unfortunately, yes. Uh, the dockable multi-window system. The dockable systems, uh, the dockable system allows you to freely position uh, secondary windows throughout the available screen space. And also it allows you to replace widgets with each other within the same container. Uh, you can resize them, add and remove a new secondary windows or even work with windows in standalone mode. Um, one of the example of this behavior is Qt Creator, actually. Uh, if you hover the mouse over a certain area of the window, it becomes available for dragging and dropping. Uh, you can also work with this window in a standalone mode. You can uh, move it in a uh, separate uh, screen if you have uh, two monitors. Um, so we have chosen the second strategy. A mix of QML plus Q widgets, and what is the main uh, uh, what pitfalls does this path keep? Uh, unfortunately, Qt Quick doesn't provide a ready-made uh, approach uh, to the dockable system. Uh, hence, two options follow. Two options follow: implement your own mechanism using Q doc widgets and QML, or uh, you can wait for one uh, dot one release of the impressive uh, KD doc widgets library with Qt Quick support from our friends at Kdap. Uh, guys, we are really looking forward to updates from you. <laughs> uh, uh, so at the moment, uh, we have implemented uh, our own mechanism based on the Quick item plus Q doc widget bundle. Uh, it looks something like this, as you can see in the picture. Uh, so the main window contains several page, uh, uh, contains several pages, uh, doc page. Um, each page contain contain doc toolbar, 
doc uh, panels. So basically, they inherit from Q quick item, which contain pointers to Q the widgets. And this approach allowed us to uh, allowed us very flexible use of uh, dockable widgets in QML. Here you can see the same page, uh, how the same page looks in the code. Uh, pay special attention how flexibly the page components are declared. I mean, toolbars here, main panels, uh, central widget, and status bar. Uh, the second uh, general pitfall is the focus handling. Um, in most desktop applications, people are used to the fact that if you press uh, the top key, the focus switches to the neighboring control or a secondary window in a circle. Uh, in the case, when you use a bundle Qwidget widget container plus QML content, then you may encounter an unpleasant and very annoying problem. And the easiest way to understand it uh, will be in this illustration. Like uh, the element has that has received focus control is highlighted uh, in red. So here's the first step. The Q widget container gets a focus control and then you press stop the Q widget container should give focus to QML child root component. Um, so the focus and the next step should go inside the child uh, QML content objects. Uh, and then having reached the last element within the QML content, content, the focus should go back to the Q widget container. But uh, uh, I think it's most important step in this case, because if you don't care of it, if you don't care of it, then after the focus control gets inside the QML content, it will simply cycle around inside this container and will not be able to leave it on its own. And that is actually a problem. This is usually solved by creating a uh, special element which haven't received control uh, of the focus uh, and it will pass it to the widget q widget container actually so that is a, that is a most common solution in this case and the last pitfall that i want to mention um the pop-ups overlapping uh, drawing the pop-ups inside Q widget container. Um, so in this case, if you use a bundle of Q widget container plus QML content, then sooner or later you may face a similar a similar limitation that QML content cannot be rendered outside the Q widget container that it belongs to. Um, like here, you can see in the picture. Uh, this is actually, this is usually done by a Q quick item wrapper that manages the control from Q widgets. Uh, for example, for tool tips, it's a Q quick item plus a Q tool tip uh, widget. So uh, that is the, that was the last pitfall. Uh, in terms of migrating uh, uh, from QWidgets to QML that I would like to mention. Um, so as you can see, the transition from QWidgets to QML has a lot of uh, a lot of issues, but looking at the result at the end, you know, you know that it's worth it's worth it. Okay, so uh, thank you very much. That's all for me. Okay, we have a few questions. So let me start out with a question of my own. Uh, okay. how, how big is the, the code base um, in, in widgets and, and how long did it take you to, to do the migration? Um, I should I should say that the 99% of so the Muse core uh, was written uh, in Q widget system. So um, a lot, it, it's a huge amount of work to migrate 
in our case. Okay. So did you did you have any stop under the way uh, on the way uh, or I mean did you put out any release in the middle of the migration or was that like the whole shebang and then you made a release? No, I, sh I think we should firstly uh, migrate all the system to the queue queued quick and then we can uh, release uh, the actual product. Okay. At the end. Okay. So, so is it out now in, in QML version? Um, no, we're just working on it. Oh, I will okay. say that we are in the middle of our way. <laughs> but okay. we, uh, how, how about the, um, how, how about uh, what is known as, as, as uh, widgets in, in, in the widget world, like a checkbox, a, a line edit and so on. Are you using Qt quick controls for those or? Sure, we prefer to use Qt uh, Quick controls as much as possible instead of Q widgets. Uh, mm -hmm. The only cases when we need a Q widget, uh, I actually t uh, told about it when, for example, tooltips, uh, some menus, and uh, you know, it, it's all about uh, specific cases. Okay, with overlapping uh, of Q widget containers. Okay. Um, there's a question that that uh, that is asking about the the doc support. Um, uh, his, I can't see his name here, unfortunately. Uh, it says uh, I remember that KT doc widget supports Qt Quick. Is that not suitable for MuseCore? And if not, why? Or did you? Well, we are that? waiting for this library. Actually, okay. it's already working with uh, uh, Q widgets, but uh, as far as I know. It doesn't support the Qt Quick and uh, uh, 1.1 release in the roadmap. So we're just looking forward for uh, for an update. Okay, I can actually see here in the chat uh, that Sergio Martins, who is the main author behind the Doc Widget, writes that it's not supported yet. Uh, so uh, guess you you'll have to wait a bit there. Um, right that he'll be be happy to let you know as the first persons whenever there's a QML version out there. And uh, Cathy asks, uh, MuseScore has always been a good example of cute based projects that implement A11Y. I'm not entirely sure what that means. Uh, did that survive the transition to QML? Sure, definitely. OK. <laughs> And I am just being taught here in the chat that, that means accessibility. There oh, <laughs> sure. The QML has a lot of uh, accessibility features. It's even better. It's even easier to implement accessibility uh, features uh, when you start with QML. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Andre asks, if you had to start from scratch, which approach would you have chosen? So. Assume that there is no Muse score at all. Would you have gone directly into a, a well? Queue? I will definitely uh, choose the the first option with the QML, one hundred persons of QML. Yeah. Okay. Just from my point of view, it's uh, much easier to develop using the QML in a declarative way. You know. I know you're actually a big fan too of QML. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, so you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm, I'm interested in, in 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 your perspective on that. What part makes you? I mean, in 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 the widget world, you want a a checkbox, so you write new Q checkbox, and you got it up there. Uh, in in QML, that's of course if you use the Qt Quick controls, there is a checkbox in there still, but. Uh, it's it's a complete different way of working, and and if you want to connect to data from C plus plus, you need to export your Q object. You need to export new elements and so on. While in widget, you just write uh, my class whatever colon public Q widget. You all write the paint event, and and you have the the widget available already. Right. So so how how do you feel that that QML is easier than than widget? Um. I think uh, in this case, uh, it 
depends on the amount of customization. For example, sometimes it's uh, it might be easier to use uh, a simple Q widget checkbox, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, if you want to widely customize it, for example, add some animations, uh, maybe graphical effects, and so on. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely better to stick with QML in this case. Okay, I I stand entirely corrected. <laughs> Subclassing Q style and messing with that is never fun. That's oh, for sure. <laughs> Q style is just a mess. Right. Okay. You mentioned that you you had some uh, issues with with uh, with focus, especially focus traversing around in in QML and going to widget again. Can you elaborate on on exactly what solution you you had for that problem? Uh, I've already mentioned the solution, so. It's better to use a uh, focus chain break item that will uh, transfer the uh, focus control to the root object. Uh, I mean, in the case when we will use a Q widget container with a QML content, and mm -hmm. uh, in the case if you are stick with uh, QML, um, it's pr it's much easier to handle the focus. Mm -hmm. Using the uh, uh, focus chain and key uh, attached property and so on. Okay. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.